How's it going everyone? This is Frida with Tribecraft. This is going to be my first video on the Children of Blood and Bone movie. If you don't know what's going on, Fox 2000 of 21st Century Fox bought the rights to the film adaptation, which will be based on the Children of Blood and Bone book. And that book is the first installment of the Legend of the Orisha trilogy by Tommy Adeyemi. So this was hyped to be one of the biggest YA debut novels because the publishing deal came with the movie, the, the rights to the movie being sold. And especially because Adeyemi was 23 at the time the book was released in March 2018. So if you haven't read the books but are familiar with Yoruba folklore, then you have a broad idea for the mythology. But I encourage you to go read the book so we can all jump on a discussion on your thoughts and such. So I'm going to do a brief explainer of what's going on with the project and what to expect. So this movie is it's still in the early stages of development. Think of it as the latest in YA movie franchises like Twilight Saga, The Hunger Games, The Maze Runner series, and the Divergent series. Some of the production team actually worked on those franchises so we know Rick Famuyiwa has been picked as a director. Um, He's great. I'm going to talk about him and the production team in a minute. The premise of the book is based on a girl who is blessed with magic but lives in a land where the magic magic has been taken away and um, magicians have been killed by a ruthless king. She goes on this quest with a rogue princess and try to outwit her brother, the crown prince, in order to sort of call upon the gods and get magic back in the land, bring down this oppressive regime. So if you are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. I'll be doing videos covering the history, Yoruba mythology and my thoughts on the characters. It's going to be a big series, especially given the fandom. So there's so much to talk about, even though it's still in a pre-production phase. Disney acquired Fox last year and Fox 2000 was one of the studios that they acquired that after the merger, they decided they're going to close. So all the projects that they've been working on, including Children of Blood and Bone, Fox 2000 is going to get to complete all of those. For the film adaptation, they haven't confirmed the storyline, but we know David Maggie has written a draft of the screen adaptation. If you're not familiar with David Maggie, he wrote the screen story and screenplay for Life of Pi, very good movie, and the screenplay for Finding Neverland. He did submit a draft of the screen adaptation and it looks like this. Zeli Adebola remembers when the soil of Orisha hummed with magic. Burners ignited flames, titers beckoned waves, and Zeli's Ripper mother summoned forth souls. Everything changed the night magic disappeared. Under the orders of a rootless king, Magi were killed, leaving Zeli without a mother and her people without hope. Now Zeli has one chance to bring back magic and strike back against the monarchy. With the help of a rogue princess, Zeli must outwit and outrun the crown prince who is hell-bent on eradicating magic for good. Danger lurks in Orisha where snow leponaires prowl and vengeful spirits wait in the waters. Yet the greatest danger may be Zeli herself as she struggles to control her powers and her growing feelings for an enemy. So Fox 2000 of 21st Century Fox like I said bought the rights to the screen adaptation of this trilogy and they're behind big movies like Love, Simon, The Maze Runner, and The Hate You Give. I haven't seen Love, Simon, and The Hate You Give, but I have seen The Maze Runner movies. I did like The Maze, Maze Runner movies, and I remember there was a significant amount of promotion done for that franchise. So I think if, I believe if Fox 2000 is expecting this to be their next big YA franchise, then they're also gonna invest a lot in the promos. So besides even the promos, given the hype that just surrounded the book release, I expect a lot of the promotion for the movie to be fan-driven as well. So as far as we know, Rick Famuyiwa has been confirmed as the director. Famuyiwa, he wrote and directed films like Dope and Brown Sugar. Most of his work seems to be focused on the black experience in America. Um, however, he is working on The Mandalorian, which is a live action TV series in the Star Wars universe. I haven't seen the movie Dope. I haven't seen Brown Sugar. So I'm going to watch those movies and then I'm going to comment on them in future videos. But something to note is that Famuyiwa is a Nigerian 
American of Yoruba descent. So I'm expecting and hoping that he will bring some knowledge of his heritage to production to add to the authenticity of the movies, right? As far as the production team, I had mentioned that some of them had worked in the big YA franchises like The Maze Runner, The Hate You Give, Twilight Revenge, Love, Simon, The Devil Wears Prada, and Alvin and the Chipmunks. So you'll see that they're all, they've all been involved in some big YA related or big screen franchise movies. So expecting that that, that production team will, will bring out something great from these movies. They haven't confirmed any of the cast members, although Tommy Adeyemi has said in the past that she would love for Idris Elba to play the villain king Saran and Viola Davis to play Mama Appa, who's a mentor to Zelly in the books. Getting into a little bit of the book, my expectations and concerns, um, I'm just going to state that I was very, very, very excited after reading the novel because it was the first of its kind that I'd seen that which was based in the Nigerian fictional world and it involved the supernatural fantasy type themes. I'm glad that a book based in fictional West Africa and based on Yoruba mythology will be on the big screen. Yeah, I have some concerns and I'm going to address them in more detail in the future videos, but I'm hoping that some of these concerns around the book don't carry over into the movies. African mythology aside, it was difficult for me to agree that the book lived up to its hype or was as good as people say, said it was. Because if you take away the city names and replace them with cities in ancient Greece, put in Greek, the Greek pantheon and change the chants from Yoruba to, to Latin. The, I'm not sure that the book would be perceived as revolutionary. And I think it's the African mythology or just the basis of the world is so new to people that they're calling it revolutionary. But the actual writing itself, I thought the world was new, was refreshing. As I said, it was good to have it based off of African folklore. But the world and the characters, which is what was refreshing about the book, needed to be developed more, fleshed out more, like the history of the world, development of magic, how some of the magical elements or themes worked, some backstory on the magic clan, some West African backstories in a, a more believable, believable West African backdrop. There were parts of the book where the pacing didn't make any sense. I can, or similar to kind of the issues we had with the Game of Thrones series season eight, episodes. The pacing was moving too fast to be able to grasp some of the concepts that were being created and so it made some events and scenes just not as believable as, as I would have liked. I, I'm hoping that the movie can address this, um, some of these concerns. But having said all that, I just want everyone to keep in mind that this is Tommy Adeyemi's first published book, which is already going to be a franchise, a movie franchise that's a big thing. The expectation is that the second installment, third installment of the books get better and hopefully address some of these concerns. I'm hoping that we get an adaptation that remains loyal to the books and fleshes out some of the concepts Tommy Adeyemi started bringing up and keeps her vision. I'm truly excited that an African YA fictional trilogy will get its chance on the big screen and hopefully with a big budget, right? I can't wait to see how Zelly looks and I hope they shy away from any African tropes, especially with a discerning modern audience like we have. Um, it needs to be done well for people to remain loyal to the book. So I'm rooting for the success of the movie. The second installment of the book, Children of Virtue and Vengeance will be released in a few months. Uh, it's gonna come out on December 3rd, 2019. And then the third book is gonna come out sometime in 2020. So you can look forward to that while we wait for the movie. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to leave your comments below. Let me know what kind of bonus videos you want to see. They haven't cast any actors yet, so it might be a while before we see any teaser or any trailer, but I'll do a video once we have more information on the dates and when they start announcing cast members. But I'll also be posting a video on the Lion King movie, which will be coming out next month on July 19th. And I'll be doing videos on other science fiction books, movies, and TV series centered around Africa and African folktales like Black Panther, Who Fears Death, that's currently in pre-production by HBO for a TV series. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to get all that content.